Construction is consistently happening in our area, whether that is through home and commercial building repairs or brand new buildings. And as many as 30% of tradesmen and construction business in New Orleans are Spanish speaking. The Home Builders Association of Greater New Orleans has formed a Latino committee to help the Latino community and the Greater New Orleans area community overall. Joining me now are two members of that uh, elite committee, Ms. Angelica Rivera of Colmex Construction and Mr. Jose Vegeta, CEO of JVL Construction. Welcome to Affordable Housing Matters. No, thank you for having us. This <laughs> well, is a this pleasure. Is, yeah, this is, this is quite a delightful surprise. I was not aware that such a large percentage of home construction or construction um, in general uh, had such a uh, Latino uh, influence. So what got you two involved in this particular industry? Well, uh, I'm from Colombia, and actually I started in the real estate industry back in Florida. Uh -huh. And in 2007, after we had this collapse <laughs> in the industry, uh, yeah. and uh, my husband, he was in the construction um, business, he came to New Orleans to work with someone else after Katrina. Mm -hmm. And then I moved back here too, and we realized there was a need of reliable uh, contractors because there was a lot of out-of-state contractors that commit a lot of fraud, and, and we were witness of that. So that's why we decided to open Colmex Construction. Right, Jose, so, what happened? Uh, well, it's pretty much similar. I'm originally from Mexico City. Mm -hmm. uh, I came here right after Katrina, like two weeks, uh, actually two weeks before Katrina, but I uh. went to Texas. So oh, you I went did, to Texas? Uh, yes, I went to Texas, and then, you know, Katrina was a uh, devastating event. Oh, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, brought so many people from everywhere, and it um, happens that I met somebody there that was experienced in the construction industry, and, and he invited me to come here. Mm -hmm. So I moved here in June 2006, several months after Katrina, and uh, to be honest, as an immigrant, you know, I yeah. didn't speak the language, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't have too much knowledge about other stuff and construction was one of the things that I can do that was paying well at that time and well paying well is important right yes. <laughs> so uh, and that's how I started you know they, they it was uh, a need for uh, rebuild this beautiful uh, city and to be honest I didn't like construction at the beginning uh, no no back in Mexico I never did any any construction at all uh, but over here was the best option for me, and I said, let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. And I started learning the trades, and I started doing the work, and construction feels so natural for me. And I fall in love with the construction. And, you know, as I started working on the industry, I started experiencing exactly the same thing that you just said. You know, a lot of uh, families get affected, especially the lower income families that they cannot afford a reliable contractor. They just hired somebody that they said that they could do the work. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately at that time, everybody became contractors and many people that were not honest and they were just taking the money, leave, and then leave the families with, you know, the steel work to be done on the houses or they did a job that they didn't care about it. And, you know, it was just not well done. And to be honest, when I started working on the construction, many of uh, the work that I was doing is mm -hmm. to fix Issues, issues from another. that's from another contractor. Ah, and so you was, went in to, to, to correct repairs that were supposedly done yes. correctly but had not been done yes. correctly. So you went in to, to complete and repair somebody else's work. Yeah, that was a lot of the work that I started doing at the, be at the very beginning. And uh, it, it was so sad to experience all of that. Uh, and, and let me tell you something. There is not the, the I still I still remember the beautiful feeling of giving a homeowner the keys of the house when it was totally complete. And that really is my passion to, to do that. And mm -hmm. after that, we've done hundreds of, of homes. And uh, I think that last moment, and whenever you 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 finalize and you know that it's a product that is a home that you will be happy to move in. Mm -hmm. That's that's the key uh, in the construction, and, and yeah, just like Jose was saying, the, the the industry back then was 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 really messed up. I will say because there was a lot of people that came saying that they were general contractors, that they knew what they were doing, and they were not. So yeah, a lot of people were taken advantage of. I mean, I re I remember that because I used to do shows about it, 
uh, people who came in with heartbreaking stories about how they had been ripped off for thousands and thousands of dollars by people who purported to be contractors who were really just uh, fly-by-night con people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, I think that you've been in the same situation that I was, that you saw that, you know, at the moment. Like what you saw when they were showing the houses, when they were asking you to do the work, and it's like how this can happen, you know, how people can, can do that. And uh, you know, that's the main reason why I decided to open uh, Job Construction at that time. Um, I did a lot of work for some other people, and I started doing jobs on the side. Like I started learning. Like at the mm -hmm. beginning, I didn't have much experience, so it took me probably about four years to kind of start getting familiar with the construction. And when I started doing uh, side jobs, that's when I started experience all of that. And it's like, shoot, this cannot be like that. You know, we have to do something about it. And my aportation is like, okay, I need to create something, an organization that really focus on, on customer satisfaction, uh, good products, quality, uh, honesty, and that's when we start. That's when I opened Job Construction, and you know, I start little by little. And, and you know what? You you mentioned something really interesting, and is that more than thirty percent of the industry is uh, is by Latino community. I mean, that's it's, a huge it, it's a huge percentage. But also, I, I feel like there is not enough support for that Latino uh, uh, Explain industry. Explain that. What, what, what do you mean when you so say you when, feel like there's not well, enough? Well, probably support. in my, uh, in my uh, experience when I started, I mean, I was a woman in the construction industry. Uh, my English was, was, was not good at all. And then I didn't have experience, so I had to learn and go to classes and all this. Mm -hmm. but, it, the, but there was, I didn't find back then a place where I was, that, that I could feel that they were supporting our, our Latino community. Mm -hmm. So it was really difficult, and that's why uh, today I'm so happy that we have our Latino community at the Home Builders Association, because we, we provide a, 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 everything all in Spanish, because we have a lot of people that don't speak English in the industry. Now, that is a plus for us now because we can contact them, we communicate with them, but there is a lack of opportunities for them because they cannot find jobs in, in, in uh, work with other people that don't understand them. Mm -hmm. And also, um, if they want to open uh, a, a construction company, there is not enough resources for them uh, uh, as well. So so it is difficult and, is, and again, it's sad knowing that we're uh, 30% yeah, and there is not enough support, and, and, and so yes. Enough. So what would you like to see happen as it relates to um, what's needed, the challenges being faced by the, the uh, Latino community? Well, I think that, you know, adding a little bit to what you said, uh, it's not like there is no many resources. There is a lot of resources, but because there is in an English language, we have a, that so this it, the language barrier. is the challenge. The, it is okay. a challenge. Not the mayor barriers. Uh, yeah. You know, and again, a lot of people come as an immigrants and they don't speak the language. And it took took us some time. Like myself, I still don't speak the English as well as I wish could. But uh, I'm learning. But there is a lot of people that they cannot. Um, speak at all. And well, you're doing very well. I mean, oh, thank you. <laughs> now, you, now you're officially bilingual. <laughs> See? Yes, uh, but it took me so many years to get to this point. Yeah. And when you just can hear, uh, you know, the, the, the language is a big uh, barrier. Um, so I think that that's, you know, it is resources, but not specifically for this community. And when you mentioned 30 percent, uh, that's probably nationwide, but New Orleans is probably higher than that. Really? Uh, yes. New Orleans, I think that we have a report where it says it's a little bit more than almost 70% uh, of the workforce. The workforce. It is uh, made by uh, Hispanic, uh, you know, speakers. So I, that, that must present quite a challenge um, for, for the, 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 the Latino workforce community in the construction industry. Yes. So how do you how do you um, how do you manage that? Because I I figured that that if language is a barrier and you've got seventy percent of the workforce in New Orleans construction, um, construction. probably other areas too, uh, construction. So how do you manage that? So just like uh, like Jose was saying, there is a lot of resources, 
but not in Spanish. So, and that's, if, and, and a lot of them, I mean, a lot of uh, people, they speak English, which is good, but we have a lot of uh, other ones that don't speak English. And, and even sometimes if they understand, they don't feel comfortable going into these classes. And I'm talking, again, for experience, because mm -hmm. sometimes you feel like, okay, you're not, you don't understand 100 percent or people don't understand what you're saying so it's it's kind of a it, it is difficult so, so you think you, you go in there feeling awkward yeah. and you go in there feeling isolated and ostracized and you know De not not being appreciated <laughs> is that is that it, that feeling i don't think it's too much about the not being appreciated yeah. but it's also cultural so uh, you know when you go to a place where you know like hba for example you know, mm -hmm. there is four uh, Hispanics uh, leaders on the community, uh, on the committee. We usually stay together because we know uh, in the board of directors, the, yeah, the there culture. is there is only so uh -huh. it's like you feel more comfortable. Even that you speak the language, you still uh, you know feel connected more with the group of people that you identify with. So that's also a cultural thing. Um, but but yeah, the other part is is true. Um, and actually, that was exactly what our goal was when we create the Latino Committee at the Home Builders Association mm -hmm. was to provide that place where uh, people feel, uh, or in, in the construction, they feel secure to come. They, they know they're un going to understand 100% of what, what we're doing. So uh, we we basically focus on, on three things, education. So mm -hmm. uh, not only for a business growth, mm -hmm. uh, we also want to do uh, code enforcement, see uh, uh, new codes, uh, new techniques in the construction. Um, in fact, we have a class coming up for fortified roofing, uh, which is a big deal right now in the industry. Uh, so, and it's going to be in Spanish. So, all these classes we provide them in Spanish, which is definitely something that we see is that there is a need out there. Um, in addition to this, we, we, we're doing networkings, uh, so that's, that's another uh, goal for the committee is to create uh, networkings where we can, again in Spanish, where we can uh, open opportunities to work among us because, again, there is a lot of construction companies out there that they're, they're, they're owned by Spanish, by uh, mm -hmm. Latinos, and, um, and I think it's, it's really important for us to connect as well. And advocacy yes. definitely is, is, is a big uh, deal too. We uh, understand what the needs are in our community and how we can address those needs. Uh, I think that's that's really important too. So so yeah, by, by, by creating this 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 uh, committee, we want to make sure that we are represented as a Latino com uh, community. And, and by go ahead, go no, ahead, Jose. No, that that last part is very important. I think that uh, when you ask. Uh, what is missing, I think is the representation. I think that is a group of people that, you know, raise the voice and say, hey, Latinos, we are here. We also are learning. We also want to, you know, uh, give to the community. We also want to help the community to get better. Um, education, uh, you know, us as a leaders, us as a construction workers or as a owners of a construction company, get better so we can provide better services. So. Um, and, and there one. is, and another thing is, like uh, Jose was mentioning, in our culture, we tend to work a lot in our business. So uh -huh. we have great people that they know how to do a great job, but they don't really know how to work on their business to grow uh, and right. develop. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that that's, that is important. So again, not only the, the fact that they don't feel comfortable by going into uh, into these classes, but also they don't, the, our culture is more like work in the business. I sure. mean, we need to uh, make money basically. And, and But it, again, um, that's what we want to educate people, the importance of them to work on the business, to look at from a different to perspective expand. and see, okay, yes. what is needed, see every aspect of our business and see, mm -hmm. okay, where do I need help? And and, and, and that's, those are the kind of tools that we want to provide. So you know? now that you've got the, the, the education uh, and and now that you've got the jobs, uh, how do you house people in a city that is constrained by uh, the, the lack of, of affordable housing? What do you do about that? And actually, that's a great question. I think that's an issue not only for the construction industry, but everyone, every industry is having that that, that issue currently. There is a lack of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, that's one of our specialties. We do uh, affordable housing work Good, with because non that's our specialty too. Here, <laughs> <laughs> so what's the, 
So we do we do a lot of affordable housings uh, with different organizations, and uh, and I I know there is a there is a lack of of, of homes, not only. Uh, for homeowners, but also for renters. I mean, you, there is not easy to find a property in, in within the city uh, for rent. So those are things that, that needed to be addressed. And if you ask me, how are we addressing that? Yes, well, I, there I, is, I was going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> Very definitely. Well, first, a lot of, in, in our case, a lot of uh, people in our organizations, they actually uh, live outside the, the city area, uh, which is an issue mm. too, because then mm -hmm. we have other expenses sure. uh, um, that, that come in place. Yeah, in mm. place. And uh, but um, but again, that there is a big gap there. That uh, we need to, uh, uh, as a community, as a leaders in the industry, mm. uh, the people that had the, the the boys can help us uh, to address and 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 and. And we're doing our part again by helping building more affordable housings and and make sure that we bring our communities in town okay, back for, together. So. And for and and in in regards to affordable housing, what should individuals um, who want a new home bill? What should they be asking for these days when they come to your committee? When they come to your committee for help, what what are you telling them? What, what do you, if they want to build a <coughs> yes, new home, they or they want to? Uh, what is it? Building a new home, or or, or do a remodel? Well, uh, definitely in our committee. I mean, we we we're open to. Uh, there is a lot of people that actually uh, are looking to to build, are looking for, uh, are looking to renovate, and uh, the prices increase tremendously. I mean, after COVID, it is. It is insane how the, all the industries, uh, the prices went up, and so what we try to do is we try to connect these people with uh, with lenders that can help them to to uh, fill that gap in, in their in their financials and, and be able, to, I mean, to afford um, those houses. Now, when we say affordable housing, something that I love about doing affordable housing for these organizations is a lot of those houses are so beautiful. We're talking about energy efficient. We're talking about Fortify goals requirements. We're talking about all these things that I um, I think is amazing the work that that, that that we're doing or that the government is doing by providing homes that are durable, homes that are uh, where, where anyone can move in. I mean, I was doing an inspection last week. Uh, we're, we're doing this uh, community back in Great Luciana. And we were inspecting some homes there, and, and I was like, oh my God, I wish I could move in one of these homes, because <laughs> they were so beautiful. And, and that's something that I'm proud of. But definitely connect people with organizations like, uh, there is Jericho Rowe, who offers uh, uh, financing and, and, and grants to people that qualify. There is, I mean, there is many organizations around town that, that, can, that we can connect them, so they can, they can work with them and, and get some some help financially, some grants, and, and, and also some some loans. Now you're talking our language. That's what <laughs> we want to hear. You know, how do we get those those grants and those loans um, to to be able to acquire, you know, um, a living place, a place of residence? Well, and again, I, I mentioned uh, uh, there is a lot of organizations like uh, Habitat of Humanity. They're doing a, a great job too, uh, uh, building affordable housing. In fact, they are doing a big project right now in the Lower Nine Ward. Uh, we have uh, the Housing Authority of New Orleans. I mean, if you if you go there, we're we're done some houses for them too. So uh, you just need to apply and uh, and see if you qualify for grants. And and I love to see when I see our our uh, Hispanic names and lists, I'm like, yeah! <laughs> uh, because I, I think there is, again, there is a lack in our community too, especially, uh, I mean, if it is in, in people that are from here in our community, that gap is even bigger, so. Mm -hmm. And how do people contact you, Jose, if they are interested in, in, um, in acquiring either affordable housing or construction uh, career? Um, or an, an education um, in the construction industry? What do they do if they want to get in touch with the, the Latino Committee for the, the Home Builders Association of Greater New Orleans? Um, well, uh, for that, uh, we also actually are promoting uh, in our, um, the, the network that we already have. We work with mm -hmm. a lot of uh, other Hispanic subcontractors or contractors that 
um, they don't know about the, the Latino community. It's relatively new. We just started uh, on January, actually. So it's just been a few months uh, that we started with this uh, initiative. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to give them the information. At this point, there's not many people that knows about it. Uh, but the ones that contact us, we just um, send it to the website uh, of the... Um, yeah, it's real, you know, that part. And I think it's a, it was on the uh, <laughs> screen, so people can, can, can have that information in. Um, and there is, I think there is three different, uh, 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 I will say, things that we need to address. One okay. is people that are looking for affordable house, uh, mm -hmm. that are probably in other industries that they want to see how they can um, have their homes in an affordable uh, way. And um, there is the ones that are looking for a, uh, for work, mm -hmm. uh, people that, that, that are looking for a, a full-time, um, in a company, some stability, and then we're, we're looking at people that are want to open their own company. Ah. So there is different resources, uh, and, and again, they, they can contact us and we will address whatever their needs are. Uh, but uh, again, there is a lot of organizations out there, uh, like if you want to open your own company and you're a Latino, uh, there, is, uh, there is a wonderful organization called El Centro. They actually, El Centro? El Centro. El Centro, El Centro okay. with Lindsay Navarro. They do a great job helping uh, small businesses to uh, start apps and, and open their companies with all the documents, and they're 100% in Spanish. Um, then we have, uh, if they're looking for work, we have the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, which uh, they also have a, a list of all, they, and they actually send out an email every week with um, positions available with, uh, with companies and, and not only in the construction business, but other trades. And then, uh, again, people that wanted to uh, reach out for, uh, to, 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 have a, to have the opportunity to own their own homes, they can contact us as well, and we will address them to many organizations that are helping right now. Okay, so you, you have a web page, you have a web page. And well, they can, they can contact the HBA GNO directly, or if they want to contact me, I mean, they can, uh, they can call our office, it's 504. 383-A092, and um, they can ask for me, and uh, if I'm not there, I will definitely return their calls and, uh, and guide them to the right direction. Yeah, because people, I, I know, uh, for instance, I like talking to people. <laughs> I, I, I like hearing a voice on the other end of the uh -huh. line. Uh, <laughs> when, I'm on the, uh, when I'm on the web or the internet, I'm not sure I'm getting through, you know. I'm, I'm not sure exactly who's reading the, the, the message that I'm sending. So I guess it's more important for a lot of people to be able to talk to someone, of course, like you or, or, or and Jose. So that's what we're shooting for, an opportunity to get people directly connected to the both of you. And, and actually at the HBA, we do have someone that speaks Spanish, mm -hmm. Kelly, she, she's great, she's a sweetheart, mm -hmm. and she can, I mean, I know she will guide you to whatever directions uh, you need or you're looking for. And again, I mean, they can contact us directly. I know that Jose is always willing to help as well, the community, and so. And actually, uh, something, we have these meetings every single, uh, you know, uh, the last Tuesday of every month at uh, the HBA office on mm -hmm. North Arnold. So uh, they can show up at the meetings. This oh, really? Bio club. So the, the meetings are, are Every are Thursday, open the last publicly? Thursday. Every Tuesday, the last. Uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday. Every the last Tuesday of every month, we do have a meeting at five o'clock for the Latino community. So if you have any ideas, so if you you can just go ahead and, and want to be there, you're welcome to 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 be there. Now it's in Spanish, so <laughs> <laughs> that's quite alright. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we we have meetings every month, and uh, and basically what we do in those meetings is kind of see what what's next. I mean, what what events we want to program and, and what do we want to do for the community. So. so what does someone who is Latino uh, do if they are desperately in need of affordable uh, affordable housing, of an affordable place to, to live? Well, who do they contact? What do they do? That is a good question. Like I said, uh, they can contact the uh, the HBA directly, or they can contact us. And 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 we there is the, again there is different organizations that so can, you can help. So you can put them. people in touch with the organizations. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely. That might like be I able mentioned, we're building right now some houses for Jericho Road Episcopal uh, mm -hmm. uh, Community. They do they do a great job uh, finding uh, people. Providence is another organization that help uh, people to. Uh, 
to find affordable homes. And uh, so there is there is many organizations that can always contact us, and we will put them in touch. That's what we like to do here, because people ask us. I, I know they. <laughs> I'm on the street sometimes, and they say, "Well, I need affordable housing." Can you help me? Who do I contact? So we like to tell people where they can go to get the information they need. So if we have any viewers out there listening right now, we'd like to be able to, for our viewers to be comfortable enough to call you guys, Jose or, or you, uh, Angelica, so that you can put them in touch with, with a, um, an agency that might and be able to And um, I will be more than happy to share any resource that, that we have. So yeah, you're welcome to contact us at any time. Well, thank you both for being here, and it's been a delight meeting you. And I'm, I'm glad to know that there is yet another resource out there for affordable housing. Not only affordable housing, but, but, uh, but construction jobs and yeah. career opportunities. And, and businesses. Thanks to both of you, and good luck, and you're always welcome here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having pleasure. us. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> that will conclude our program for today. We would again like to thank our guests, Ms. Angelica Rivera, Ms. Jose Vigelas, and the Home Builders Association of Greater New Orleans for giving valuable information on our program. Remember, if you would like to watch or rewatch any of our programs, please scan the QR code on the screen. It will direct you to WLAE YouTube page where you can view all of our programs at your very own leisure. I'm Norman Robinson, and we will see you, of course, next time, right here on Affordable Housing Matters.